Hey there, welcome back. So, we are going to continue our Agent Blue tutorial series. And this is the final episode in the Agent Blue series. And we're going to do what we have done so far. We are going to uh, follow a few more tutorials from the Nestmaker forum. Uh, one of those is something called Hide Behind Tiles. And the other one is a simple pause script. So you can press the start button to pause the game. So, first things first. Hide behind tile. What's that? Well, let's like, take a look at this uh, drawing that I made. So here we have the player, player object, and here we have a tile. So sometimes it's cool if you can have uh, the sprites hide behind a tile, a certain tile. So we want this guy to be able to go behind this tile, like that. So we can, uh, we can just see part of the uh, player sprite in this case, because he's hiding the, other, the bottom half uh, behind the, this tile. So that's the first uh, tutorial. So let's take a look at, um, at the tutorial sorry the tutorial it's made by all all darn Davy. this is another very talented guy on the nestmaker forum he has made a lot of super cool tutorials so hide behind tile it says uh, it's for version 456 but don't worry it works great with uh, 459 as well so he um telling us to uh, first of all make a tile so let's make a new tile so let's open up our um, agent blue nestmaker folder and let's go to game engine data routines base 4.5 game and mod metroidvania remember we are using the metroidvania module so, in this case, the, the mod metroidvania folder does not have any tiles folder. So let's just make a new folder here and call it uh, tiles. And let's uh, go into our new tiles folder and let's make a new file. I'm just going to make a, a text file like this and I'm going to call it hide behind and I'm going to remove txt and I'm going to write asm instead do I want to change the file format yes so now I have now I have a new assembly file so I'm going to open that in notepad plus plus and I'm going to go back to the tutorial whoops uh, there we go so the code for the uh, tile itself it's really simple it's just this part so let's copy that copy this first part and paste it i'm just going to write a comment <coughs> here at the top it says hide behind tile and i'm going to paste the new code in here like that and i'm going to save it so <clears throat> that's my new tile type hide behind tile and i'm also going to do this a very tidy way so i'm going to go to nestmaker project settings and tile types under project labels and we have and there are mm, just a few free tiles left so i'm going to use tile 13 for this and I'm going to call tile 13 hide behind tile and let's not forget the most important part here script settings let's go down to uh, tile types here and <clears throat> remember this was tile 13 so let's go to tile 13 Let's go over to the right, base 4.5, game, 
mod metroidvania <coughs> tiles and hide behind double click that one so now we actually have a new tile type in our game uh, just a quick comment you may have noticed that some of these here in script settings have this blank file attached to them but yet they are they they, uh, they are actually tile types so not every single tile type by default has a script attached to it so the way that works is that um, for example in the physics script a lot of a lot of these tiles are hard coded into the physics script <clears throat> so that's <clears throat> something just to keep in mind when you're working with tiles so even though they say blank here they aren't really blank all right so back to the hide behind tile we have tile 13 hide behind asm here so let's close project settings and we're not quite done yet we have our tile but we need to do something more so let's go back to our tutorial here so um as usual if you're doing this in a project uh, in, in a serious project a game that you're developing please make sure you make a backup first because we are going to make some drastic changes to a few important files here so for example the next one actually uh, old Don Davy tells us to back up our old do, do, do draw sprites file now as I said before this is just a test project so I'm not going to do that in this case but we need to change the do draw sprites all right so I'm actually going to do this um, without doing any sort of pre. <coughs> I'm going to be very careless about this. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing, whole this whole block of code. It's quite a lot actually. Whoops. Uh, so there we go. Copy this whole block of code to where. It, it says then make a new copy that's something else but just make sure you have this code block selected under where he's talking about do draw sprites so let's copy that and i'm going to go back to nestmaker script settings uh, project settings script settings and i'm going to go all the way down to um to draw sprites handle drawing sprites so I'm going to edit that one so as I said this is really careless um, normally you would make a backup of this file but I'm just going to select everything delete and I'm going to paste in this new code from uh, all, uh, all done Davy. All right, we have pasted in the new code, removed the old code, pasted in the new, and I'm going to save this file. Okay, so now we have a new do draw sprites file, or a modified do draw sprites file. Uh, then he says, make a copy of bank 18 may space. So when he made this tutorial, he made it for the uh, MySpace module. Uh, this works great with the uh, Metroidvania module as well. So let's just uh, go to Bank 18. So let's go to Nestmaker, Project Settings. Let's go to the top here and find Bank 18. That's this one. So select Bank 18 and click Edit. So now he says copy this code into it and like before I'm just going to do this the real easy way 
easy and careless. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. So let's see. There we go. Copy this whole code block. And back in Nestmaker, project settings, I'm going to click edit on bank 18. So select everything, delete, and paste in the new code from the forum. And I'm going to save this. So basically now we have a new do draw sprites file and a new bank 18 file. They are modified versions of the uh, the default ones, but um, yeah. And we also have this new hide behind uh, code for the tile itself. So um, that should be it. So let's test this out. First of all, let's just see if uh, the game works or if we broke something. So let's see. Well, it's working. And I have my rain enabled. I don't want rain now, so I'm going to disable um, this rain effect. Let's see, do I have that? Uh, no, whoops. Yeah, so I don't have a rain effect on, uh, on the other screens. Okay, so anyway, now I'm going to go to this screen, just uh, to the right of our slope screen. So I uh, made two new tile types, or two new tile graphics. One that uh, looks like this. It's supposed to be some sort of fence. So this is just to show you how um, this hide behind tile thing works. And I also made this other graphic. <clears throat> I'm going to choose the uh, gray palette for that one. So something like that. All right. So right now, these are just normal background tiles, right? So I can walk in front of these. They are just part of the background. But if I go to collision over here on the left, I'm going to choose my new hide behind tile tile type. I'm going to paint these in, uh, this fence with this new tile type. And I'm going to paint the hide behind on these as well. So now this part and this part is hide behind tiles. Which means that I should be able to go behind this graphics. So let's see if that works. All right. There's our sewer. There's our slopes. Now. Sure enough. And as you can see, uh, in this case, the uh, player sprite is partially visible you can barely see him behind there <clears throat> so the thing is with um, the hide behind tiles it hides the sprites behind uh, any color uh, besides the uh, transparent color so since I painted uh, when I drew this uh, this tile I used black around here so that's the transparent color. So it's go only going to um, hide this sprite behind these gray lines. And this I painted with um, only uh, yellow and brown. 
so the sprite is completely hidden behind this. So this creates a pretty cool effect. But you might have noticed something here. If I just jump up a little bit here, maybe you can see it, but just as I um, jump up from the fence, the sprite is actually behind these lines, these background lines as well. So that's because um, we can't just hide part of the sprite like that. Um, uh, the problem here is that uh, half the sprite is behind this tile, the other half, half is uh, here. So it's going to hide the sprite behind everything that is uh, not transparent, the transparent color, until he completely leaves this tile. So by the time he gets up here, for example, then he's going to come to the foreground again. So I don't know if you can see it, but right now we are behind these background lines. But up here, we are completely in the foreground. So <clears throat> um, this is just how this works. So in order to um, make some sort of workaround for this, we need to paint um, the areas around with a black tile. And I'm just going to use this old trick by holding down my six key on my keyboard. <clears throat> holding down a 6 key to draw completely black tiles. So I'm just going to draw black tiles around the areas where I have this hide behind tile thing. Something like that. So now there are no tiles next to the um, hide behind tiles that have uh, any graphics. All these tiles that surround these are completely black or transparent, the transparent color. So now, if I test my game, let's see. Let's see. So now, if I just jump just about above the fence, there's no uh, weird effect that uh, the player is going behind these uh, lines. Same here. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're designing levels with this hide behind tile thing. That um, unless you absolutely want that sort of effect. I recommend having just transparent tiles, black tiles around the hide behind tiles. So you don't get any weird effect, uh, an, an unexpected effect. So now it looks more natural. I hide behind this fence. And uh, same thing here. So, just a little quick simple way to uh, hide our player sprite behind a tile. Alright, so let's, um, let's just continue and uh, let's take a look at our uh, other tutorial. And um, let's just give a shout out to all Don Davy here because I think this is really cool. So, the uh, other tutorial is made by Nine Panzer. So, this is so super simple. This is the postscript. Simple postscript for the Metroidvania module. And the only thing we need to do is to make a new input script. So let's go to our uh, Agent Blue. 
our nestmaker folder and uh, game engine <coughs> game engine data routines base 45 game mod metroidvania and let's go to the inputs folder and I again I'm just going to right click choose new text document and I'm just going to give this a name simple name I'm just going to call it pause and I'm going to remove txt and write asm instead so I'm going to open that and I'm going to write a comment pause input oops input script so in my pause input script I'm just going to do it really simple just copy this code right here copy this code block paste it in my pause input script save it and I'm going to go back to nestmaker I'm going to I'm going to go to scripts input scripts and I'm going to go to base45 game mod metroidvania inputs and there's my input script so I'm just going to double click my input script and now I need to go to the input editor and <clears throat> this is going to be for the main game game state it's going to be the start button but I'm not going to run this script when I press the start button. I'm going to run this script when I release the start button. Oh, you, uh, if you read the, the tutorial from Nine Panzer, he actually says here that, um, uh, like he says here, for whatever reason, it doesn't like push. I think the problem is that when you push the uh, start button, it's going to run this script several times. Because um, even though you press the start button really fast, the NES is a lot faster than us. So it's just a quick tap is going to run the script several times. But when you release it, that happens just once. So that's why we are assigning this script to release. So when we release the start button, that's when the uh, pause script is going to run. So make sure you have game state main game you have clicked the uh, start button here and choose release for that so the script to run is of course our new script here called pause so select pause and finally click add script but there's one more thing we need to do <clears throat> we need to make a user variable called pause game so let's just copy this pause game here. Copy. Go back to Nestmaker. Script settings. User variables. Add. And let's paste in this pause game right here. So now we have a new user variable, variable just for this pause script. And that should be it. Yep, that's it. So let's test that. Let's try to pause our game. I'm going to um, do a really quick test here. Just going to um, jump in midair. I'm going to pause in midair so you can see that the game is actually paused. There we go. And if I press start again, then the game resumes, just like you expect. So that's great stuff. Just a very simple, um, simple way to get the pause function in your game. It's going to pause all the enemies and everything that's going on here. So, very cool. So thank you Nine Panzer for this very simple tutorial. 
Okay. Well, you know what? That's it. That's it for today. So, now we are done with the uh, Agent Blue series. I haven't quite planned uh, the uh, next series yet, but it's going to come in the near future, maybe um, sometime next week. But I hope um, this wasn't too... Uh, I didn't uh, go through this too quickly. So, but anyway, I'm going to uh, link both of these tutorials in the uh, description, so you can follow them there if you want. But anyway, have a nice day. Bye bye. Just one more thing before we go. So I forgot something about uh, the hide behind tile. <clears throat> There's a little issue to keep in mind if you're using this. So let's go to uh, the screen where we have our hide behind tile. So now everything's working pretty, pretty well. Uh, the problem is if you uh, put the hide behind tiles right next to a solid tile. Let's try that. Let's, uh, let's just make a solid part here, like that. And uh, let's make sure that we paint, paint those with a solid collision. So now you can see we have solid tiles right next to, the, uh, to this hide behind tile. So what happens if you do that? Well, let me show you. Let me run the game again. So if we put uh, a solid tile right next to the hide behind tile, then this happens. So now I'm uh, hiding behind the tile, no problem. But when I press against the solid tile, so I'm just gonna keep walking right now. So did you see that? When I'm behind this tile and I hold right, pressing against the solid tile, then I, uh, the, the player sprite comes to the foreground again. Only when you press against a solid tile like that. So there's not really any great fix for that. <clears throat> it's just something to keep in mind when you're using these hide behind tiles. So the best ad advice I can give you is to design your level around that. So if you can, then it's best if you can avo avoid having a solid tile right next to the hide behind tile. Because if not, you're going to get this effect. So that's just something to keep in mind when using hide behind tiles. All right, that's it for real this time. Bye bye.